crazy why something on it If you are not currently working to stop 5G this means you don't understand it While protesters rail against 5G spread a greater threat is looming a global technology war the race to 5G is a race America must win. It's a race that we will win. The protesters here are worried that radio signals from 5G towers could be damaging to their health. I don't want to be a human lab rat, you know, because that's what's happened. That they're just using us to see if, it can, if it's going to be okay. And if we die, well, we've got so many of us. Yeah, because I'm worried about our kids, the future. The, it's not proved to yet the 5G is safe enough. If you wanted to inflame conspiracy theorists, building a modern Stonehenge that acts as an astronomical calendar with 10 commandments inscribed upon it, one of which says that you should guide reproduction wisely, and another that says it'd be a, a really good idea to have a world population under 10% of what it currently is, and, and doing all that while hiding your identity. I think for Telstra to roll out the, the installation of 5G during a pandemic in Mullumbimby, um, you know, it was, it was it, I'm sure they thought they were very clever doing that, but um, I think it was a really bad move and I think it really played into people's paranoia around this and, you know, into the conspiracy theory and that, you know, this is all a, a move to, you know, to institute a technology that, that um, is potentially harmful. Telstra's tower at Mullumbimby is just one of thousands of sites being upgraded to 5G across the country. Australia's telecommunications companies are spending billions of dollars building networks that they say will transform how we live and work. 5G promises a future where everything is high speed and interconnected. From autonomous vehicles to fight bushfires, to hyper-efficient agriculture, and remote surgery. Just imagine a paramedic with the 5G technology. You could, for example, have the paramedic using a pair of, um, you know, augmented reality glasses. So what that paramedic sees, you could transmit back to a specialist back in the hospital. The, that person can then look at the patient as if they were there. They can provide advice. They could even send an instruction which you could be displayed on a heads-up screen. And that's the kind of thing which you can do in real time on 5G, which you can't today do on 4G. Mark Zuckerberg and his team at Facebook are the latest tech company to try to make video glasses go mainstream. The social media giant Thursday unveiled what it calls Ray-Ban Stories, its first pair of smart glasses which allows wearers to capture photos and short videos, of course, to easily post on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Ray-Ban stories are an important step towards a future when phones are no longer a central part of our lives. And you won't have to choose between interacting with a device or interacting with the world around you. Facebook is treading where another Silicon Valley giant has gone and failed. Google set off a privacy firestorm when it launched Google Glass in 2013, the public was so off-put by the video recording frames that early adopters were called glass holes. 5G is not just about phone calls and ever-increasing resolution of videos. It's going to unlock the Internet of Things. And this is where machines start talking to machines. And this is going to allow a whole revolution in the way we, we live and organise ourselves, in the way we, we live and organise ourselves, in the way we, we live and organise ourselves. For example, the smart city. We can start coordinating traffic flow, which is going to have safety benefits, is going to have emission benefits, and beyond traffic is going to be coordinating air conditioning in buildings, coordinating lighting in buildings, uh, all sorts of things when machines start sensing the environment and actions can be taken. To deliver the fastest speeds, phone companies need to use higher frequency signals, known as millimetre waves. But millimetre wave signals can't travel as far as existing signals. So for it to work, there's a need for many more antennas installed much closer together. 
We would deploy millimeter wave in a CBD, for example, where there is a lot of traffic. What it would probably look like is you would probably see a cell site in most street corners. Probably see a cell site in most street corners. Probably see a cell site in most street corners. But because it is at that high frequency, the antennas themselves are very small and almost invisible, very small, and almost invisible, very small, and almost invisible. Do we want this? Do we want these towers blighting our landscape? Do we need more radiation? Do we want driverless cars? Who's asked for this? There's been no consultation. We are going to be in a, a radiation soup that we cannot opt out of. So at the moment, we have choices. Once uh, 5G is, is implemented, we no longer have any choice. We are in a soup of radiation that we cannot escape. Doctors first wrote about what they called radiophobia as early as 1903 to describe people who were afraid of radio speakers. Yet anxieties about power lines have... In the 80s, it was the radiation emitted by power lines. They're invisible and just about everywhere. Do we play Russian roulette with people's children? Should you be taking steps to keep your kids away from electromagnetic fields? Microwave cooking units, like those in the NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory. It's easy, why? Something on it.